Hey everybody, tonight I have a uh, video for you. We're going to do another um, artwork from start to finish. This one uses one of my favorite landscape types, a shoreline. And we'll have a uh, hunting dog added to it as well. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in view and this is where we're going to build our shoreline. So the first thing you need to build a shoreline is some water to have a shore in. So to do that, I'm just going to click on this button up here that looks like a couple of waves. And if you don't see this, you can click and hold and select between uh, water planes, ground planes, and sky planes. And we want a water plane. And this will have created our water plane. And it creates it level with the camera in my case, so I'm going to lower that just a bit. And if we look in the preview window over here, we have water. Alright, so now let's uh, create a shoreline. And to do that, we're going to need some land. So for the land, we click on this uh, button right here, which is the terrain button. If you click and hold for a second, you can also get the um, how detailed you want the terrain. I'm just going to use the, the standard 256 by 256. And click OK. And we're going to, it's going to build that way too uh, tall for us. So we're going to shallow that out a pretty good deal. And I'm going to zoom out on the top view here and see if I can find a shoreline that looks kind of interesting. Um, how about this over here? And turn that so that's in the way of the camera. So now we have this kind of nice snaky looking little uh, shoreline. Um, you want to be careful not to have your shore intersect with the uh, the corner that's a bad, um, bad composition. So you want it to either hit a little bit here, a little bit up on the side here, or a little bit below here. I think we'll make this one go up on the side a bit. So I'm going to turn this just a touch more. And actually, I think we'll adjust the camera angle while we're here. We're going to get down down closer to that water and then angle the camera up some. And then I'll put our horizon line not in the middle anymore, which is also a uh, bad composition. You want it to the lower part or upper. And it doesn't look like much here because the um, in the preview window because the uh, terrain doesn't have a texture. So let's give that a texture. And we'll pick one that I, is one of my favorites for shorelines. It's this one, let's see, right here, Wet Stony Beach. And we'll click OK. Um, right now, we're not going to populate the ecosystem. We're just going to leave it as it is. And now, if we look over here in the preview window, we actually have something that looks pretty good. Um, now, let's uh, throw some rocks in. And instead of just populating the whole thing, I find it easier just to kind of paint in where you want the rocks. So we'll go to the paint mode. Actually, before we even do that, let's change out. I don't like this wet sand. I prefer to change that out with a different material. So we'll load my favorite, which is sediment. And just a quick check over here to make sure it looks okay. It looks pretty good. Now, it doesn't look much different in the preview window, but if you were to render it, you'd see some differences. And we'll go up here to the wet stony beach ecosystem and we'll click on the paint and the brush and over here in this window we'll just brush along the shoreline we don't need to go too high on this um, shoreline because we're going to put some grass up here all right so we uh, we're looking over here at the preview and it looks like the rocks might be a little bit too big but just to be sure i'm going to do a quick preview render and we'll uh, increase the full make that go full screen and have a look at it um, Actually, I think that looks pretty good. So we'll uh, maybe make the rocks just a tiny bit smaller, and then we'll go over the shoreline again. So let's uh, clear that and make the rocks yeah, about 20% smaller there. And then we'll paint in the uh, rocks again. It might work a little bit better here in the full screen, except i got to move things around to get both sides. All right, so now let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's just add some grass here a little higher on this. So to do that, we'll just pick on this Mountain 10 here and click the Ecosystem button, and that creates a new ecosystem. And it calls it based on what you uh, created it from, so it calls it Mountain 10. And we'll add some grass. Plant, and we'll go up to the grasses and plants that come with view, and we'll pick long grass. 
And now I don't want it to be all the way down to the water because I want these rocks to show. So I'm going to make sure the presence, the altitude range, is not all the way down to the bottom. And let's uh, set the scale up to 1 here and click Populate. And it looks like the grass is a little bit too small. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's go up to about 1.7. And uh, let's make it vary in size a bit. So we'll double the, uh, the variation in size. Now when um, you have the uh, proportions 100%, the X value works for all three values. So basically this means the uh, maximum size variation will range from uh, basically the, 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 end of it, the, the beginning size to double that size. And also I want the direction from the surface to be uh, perpendicular. This, this will make it so the grass isn't totally straight up and down. And then we're going to increase the density up to pretty high, about 94%. And now we're looking better. Now I think my grass is actually too big. So let's go down a bit smaller. Let's go down to 1.2. And that in the preview window looks pretty good. Now it's not quite, it's a little too high on this um, terrain. You can see a gap between the rocks and the, uh, and the grass. Let's see if we can close that up a little bit. And actually, uh, sometimes the uh, water will, if you have this decay near foreign objects turned on, the water will drive away whatever you're trying to populate. So let's turn that off. All right, I think it still looks a little too big, that grass. So we'll go back down to one. Because when, uh, when I added this um, maximum size variation, that, that kind of effectively increased it already. So now we're back down to the one where we started. And that looks pretty good. So let's do a quick preview window, render, and see how that looks. Okay, so I think I like that. Now we have this gap back here though where we see some water and we want this to be more like a, a river shore. So let's add another terrain back there. And we just click on the terrain button and drag this one back to that area. Flatten it out some. Sort of make it so we hide the horizon. All right, and I'm going to just take this terrain copy the material and paste it here. Now we're not going to populate the ecosystem. We're going to leave it as it is because I don't want to populate it with rocks, just the grass. So we'll click on, we'll uh, double click here and we'll get rid of the wet stony beach um, ecosystem. Okay and so we just hit the, uh, the populate button here after we've deleted that and that'll add the grass. And now you can see that, that that gap's empty, or is no longer uh, no longer a gap, it's now full. All right, and so let's just add some background trees here. And to do that, if we just create a, um, a cube is fine. Just need to stretch it out pretty good. And we'll throw a forest in of some sort. Uh, let's do some oak trees maybe. So we'll just create another ecosystem. We'll add a plant, we'll go to trees, and we'll pick this white oak tree. Set the scale up to one and just hit populate and just see what, how, how it goes. And we didn't get anything. The reason is that the water acts as a foreign object. So we have to turn off this decay near foreign objects and now if we hit populate we'll get our forest. Hey, and that looks pretty good as it is. I think I want it to be a bit bigger. So let's, um, actually, let's just adjust the scaling and orientation. So this will vary the size of our trees a bit more. All right, and let's pick a, uh, a better, let's do some atmosphere work here. So I'm going to click and hold here on this sun behind a cloud, and that lets me choose atmospheres. And I'm just going to pick, um, you know, let's see what classic day looks like. And that immediately looks way too hazy. So let's pick something else. Pick one of my favorites, Danger in the Air. Oh, that looks pretty good, but it still looks too hazy. So let's, um, we'll pick one more. And then if that doesn't work great, we'll, we'll 
start adjusting things. Let's pick this one here, this fair weather. Now that looks pretty good right there. It's still a bit too hazy. Um, we'll uh, fix that though. So I'm going to go into the atmosphere editor and I do this by instead of clicking and holding I just click once. We'll go to sky and fog and let's reduce the uh, aerial perspective down to about five. That'll make it a lot less hazy in the background. Maybe made it a little bit too too much not hazy. Let's go up to about 10. All right, that's pretty good there. All right, a couple other things I want to do. I want to go to the sun, set the softness up to about 3. I'm going to double click on it here. Go to shadows and reduce the shadows to about 85%. This will give you more realistic sh outdoor shadows. And we'll increase the softness quality while we're here to 1. And go back to the atmosphere editor real quick and go to uh, quality boost and set this down to negative 1. This will just help with render time, but it won't really impact the, uh, the quality of the image in the end. All right, so let's give that a, uh, a preview render and let's see what that looks like. All right, so stop this one a little bit early because I don't like the grass, the color of it here. So I'm going to go into these, uh, this terrain, and I'm going to uh, yellow out this grass a bit. And to do that, I just click on the uh, ecosystem that has the grass. That's this one here. And I'm going to change the color, the overall color. I'm just going to go yellower and a bit brighter and a bit grayer. Now let's see how that looks. And it still looks a little too green. So we'll drag it more into the orange. Let's brighten it up even more too. And I think I like that a bit better. So I'm just going to copy that color. And I'm going to go into the, our second terrain's ecosystem because we want the, gr the grass to match. And paste that there and populate. And now we'll do our preview render. Okay, so let's have a look here. That looks pretty good. So I think we'll keep that. And then we'll go over to Poser and we'll create some sort of animal to put in this. Maybe a dog. All right, so let's go over to Poser. Okay, so here we are in Poser. Now I'm using a slightly older version than you're used to seeing me use. But uh, my, my good computer's down right now getting its uh, hard drive backed up. So I have another computer, and this is using a somewhat older version of Poser, but it'll still do for our purposes today. So um, I'm going to delete the, uh, the default character here and jump over to my character menu. And I think we're just going to do a dog, and the dog that I like to use is the, uh, the Millennium Dog, which is a character Daz puts out, or Daz 3D. And it looks like this, but we're going to make him look a bit more like a hunting dog. So let's uh, select the whole figure. And you see here you have these morphs that will change it to um, other types of dogs. And we're just going to make him a hound dog. So now he looks much a little bit more like a hunting dog. We'll give him a hunting dog style skin, and we're going to use one of my favorites. So over here in the pose menu, under I keep it under animals... I think Daz Mill Dog. No. Matt Mill Dog. And we'll pick the German Short Hair. And I, I like the way this dog looks here. And we'll just give him a quick pose. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, maybe make it look a bit like his... Uh, and let's go to the Rotate tool here. Right, let's put those feet together a bit more. Just kind of a nice pose for the, uh, he'll be standing in the grass, so I don't even have to worry too much about his legs. Now let's see if we have a,
Make it look like he's sniffing the air. Maybe he's hunting for something. And that's really all we're going to do. And that quick and that simple. Let's uh, make it a female dog. Uh, it just makes for a more family-friendly painting. There we go. So it's a girl now. Um, so now we'll just save that off, and I'll just save it to the desktop. So we'll save it as... Up here on the desktop, hunting dog. And with that, we're done in Poser. Okay, we're back in view now, and um, these trees are kind of getting in my way, making it hard to see, so I'm going to hide them. And to do that, there's various ways you can do it. What I like to do is just take the uh, the cube that the terrain is built on. This is this cube we put the trees on. Put it in its own layer and just hide the layer. And then when we click off of that, it disappears. We could also um, drag other things we may not want there. How about the uh, terrain, too, which is that background terrain. We can get rid of that. I don't think the cum cumulus clouds don't really matter. So now we just have the terrain where we're going to plant the dog. So let's bring the dog in. And for that, we just click on this um, box with an arrow here. And if you click on this little arrow down here, this will take you to the file system. And we put the dog on the desktop. And we'll load him up. Just double click on it. Okay, or just hit the open button. I just click OK for the defaults there. Um, I never knew what this was. I've always just clicked No. And we didn't have any kind of animation or anything, so we're just going to import a single frame, and it's going to be frame zero. And there's our dog. He's way too small. That's why it only looks like a dot, so we'll make him quite a bit bigger. And put him over here on our terrain. Let's turn him. I shall say turn her to the side and then put it on the ground so I'll give a quick uh, look in the preview window to see what that looks like uh, it looks pretty good but she's still a bit small let's make her bigger because we want this to be a pretty important character in this scene it's a better size but now she's um, a little bit too close to the top of the frame so I'm going to take the uh, main camera here and uh, angle it up now well, let's just raise it a little bit and maybe angle it up a tiny bit. And we want to be careful that we don't lose our shoreline down here, though. All right, so let's see how that looks in a quick preview uh, render. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, the only thing I see here is a little bit of a bald spot on the landscape. We can fix that pretty easily um, just with the paint tool. So I'm just going to double click here and make sure I pick the right ecosystem. It's, it's this one right here. And our color, sometimes the color snaps back, so I like to check on it, but it's still our light yellowish color. I'm just going to click the paintbrush and go to a single instance. And just click a couple of times down along here to fill in this gap. Well, that should be enough. And if you just want to check on that part of the render you can do this area render which you you click on this little symbol here and you draw a square around the part you want to render and it's kinda nice that it kinda fills in what you've already rendered still got a little bit of a gap so I'll do a couple more go a little bit lower towards these rocks here and you see a couple of things appear in All right, that's a bit looking a bit better. Okay, that looks pretty good there. I think I like that. And the color's a bit dull, so I'm going to have to fix that in post-production. Um, but that shouldn't be a problem. So let's uh, send this to the final render. Let's make, be sure and turn off, turn off area render before you go to final rendering. Click and hold on the camera, and this will get you your render options. And we're going to go to final render to screen and we'll render this one pretty big here about 5200 by 3500 and away we go okay so the render finally finished it took 82 hours and 51 minutes 
So it was a pretty long render. Um, mostly probably has to do with this grass here. When you do uh, ecosystems, sometimes grass takes a long time to render. So anyway, um, we're going to save this off. And to do so, I'm just going to click here on the, uh, the disk shape button here. And we'll save this one on the desktop. And I've saved one about halfway through because I actually did have to stop this render at one point and then restart it back up. So we'll, we'll just overwrite that one that I saved before. And it calls it Shoreline 2. And then I'm going to save the Z uh, or the depth map. And I do that by clicking first on the Z. Now you don't see much here, but if I were to scroll up, you'll see uh, a grayscale version of the image where, um, you know, let's zoom out a little bit here, where things that are closer are darker and things that are further away are lighter. We're going to save that. Same thing. Click on the, the disk shape button. And we'll save it over this uh, Z map that I saved here before. Overwrite that. And that's all we need to do in view. So we'll get out of view now and go on to GIMP. Okay, so I've loaded uh, our image here in GIMP. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is, I, I pointed this out earlier, the colors are a bit dull. And I'm going to use a plugin I have called um, Topaz Adjust to uh, enhance the colors. Now, it's a little bit complicated to load in GIMP, and I'll have a video maybe later on showing you how to do it, but you can look it up on the internet. Um, it's, it's, a, it's from uh, Topaz Labs, and it's a pretty useful tool for enhancing colors. And once it's installed in GIMP, you can uh, it'll show up under your filters menu. Here it is, Topaz Labs and Topaz Adjust. And I just click here. Okay, so here we are. Topaz Adjust it's, has started up. Um, now, over here, we have a whole bunch of presets we can choose from to, for uh, adjusting the colors. The presets are a starting point because over here you have a lot more sliders you can adjust. I'm just going to, for time's sake, I'm just going to pick one that I kind of like here, this autumn one. And you can see this really enhance the colors, really brighten things up. And I might go up over here and mess around with a few sliders to figure some things out. Maybe see if the adaptive exposure... Don't want to do too much here. Can test out various contrasts. Hmm. I think I'll, except I'm not going to spend too much time. I, I kind of like just what the preset did. So we'll save that. And to do that, you just click the apply. And then you wind up waiting a pretty good while for it to finish. And then once it's applied, we just click OK. Okay, now when it comes first comes back, it looks like your old image. You have to wait for Topaz Adjust to finish its processing. And that can actually take quite a while, especially on a large image like this, which is you know, 5200 by 3467. So be patient and wait. And after a little while, your adjusted image will pop onto the, uh, the original. Okay, so it took about 10 minutes for the uh, Topaz Adjust to finish with this. And here it is. Um, it's loaded on our... Uh, or into GIMP here. Um, if you want, you could always go back and open the uh, original. I think I had that down here. And you can actually kind of see how much of a difference that, that made. All right. So um, I'm going to use the, uh, the depth map that we saved off earlier to do a little bit here. Not very much. I'm just going to go over to the depth map and um, under colors, go to threshold. And all I'm going to do is separate the foreground from the background. And you can see here I can slide along to and it's going to just set, at some point, everything black and white. And right about there is going to separate the foreground and background. So click OK. And here we're just going to select all and copy. And then paste it onto our main file here. We're going to make that layer a solid layer. Select by color and select black. And just throw that layer out in the trash can. But now I've selected the foreground here. So we can uh, copy and paste, and that creates a new layer. And we'll just make that a solid layer. Now you see there's a little gap here because the selected area didn't cover all the way to the top. Um, to, to fix that, you can always just create a new layer and merge it down. And now our layer goes all the way to the top. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to separate the background a little bit by creating sort of a layer of mist along here. And to do that, I'll just create an empty layer and put it between those two. 
And I'm going to pick my, uh, what is this thing called? The, the uh, airbrush tool. And we'll pick, um, I have some uh, smoke brushes here. I'll just pick one of those. And make it pretty large. Larger still. About there. And undo that because I have the wrong color. Let's go with white. And go here and just kind of create a foggy layer. All right, let's go a bit bigger still. Kind of make that a really f foggy forest back there. Lots of mist. All right, that's it. I just wanted to separate. I mean, you can see the difference by turning that layer on and off. I just want to separate that background a bit more from the foreground. And one last thing I'm going to do is fix the dog's fur a little. And to do that, I'm going to go to the smudge brush and pick... Um, a, I think they call this a, a bristle brush. Yeah, bristles 0 02. That's just a light bristle brush. And actually, I think that one's probably going to be, I might need a little bit more of a denser one, but let's have a look. Oops. Get the opacity all the way up. I want the size very low. And we'll just zoom in here on the dog's head for now. Go back to our smudge brush. Let's do a quick look at this. The brush is still a bit too big. Let's undo that. Let's go down to, let's say size 20. And uh, it's not doing much, so let's um, change the rate up of the smudge up pretty high. Let's go up to about 90. Now have a look. All right, there we go. And now I can just kind of go along the outside of this dog here. And you know what? I don't think I like that either. Let's try a different brush. Let's see, what is this? Acrylic 03. And you can just try various brushes here. I don't like that one either. Actually, I think I have a brush called a fur brush. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, that's that one right there. Uh, that one does pretty good right there, actually. Let's just keep that one. That's probably a bit too extreme. You don't need to do a whole lot on a short-haired dog. I just want to kind of break the edges up just a tiny bit. So it doesn't look quite so solid. So I just break up some of these hard lines. And now I'm going to go over the whole dog, kind of just fixing various areas here and there. Said as he's a short hair, we don't need to do a whole lot, but just a few spots here and there. Especially right here along the elbow. Areas where the dog would have fur kind of sticking out. Maybe along the underside right here. And you want to break up this really hard line that the back creates. See, so I'm not doing a whole lot. Just a tiny pull here and there. Just to make it look like the fur is kind of sticking out. I'm kind of, and I'm going, being sure to kind of pull in the direction that the fur would actually be sticking out. So in this case, I'm going a little bit back along the uh, this line. All right, so let's zoom back out. So it doesn't look too obvious from when it's zoomed out, but it just adds a little bit of detail, you know, breaks up those hard lines a little bit. And I think that's all we really need to do for this work. So um, we'll save this off, file, export as, and we'll call this, uh, give it a better name now, hunting dog, dot jpeg. And we'll save it to the desktop. Make sure you have your quality all the way up. You might want to make sure that the uh, file size is under 25 megabytes. Because uh, Fine Art America that I use to uh, host my print-on-demand gallery, or it has a, a limitation of a, uh, a 25 megabytes for a file. So you can see here it's 31.4. That's too big. Just Set the size quality down by a little bit. You don't need to go very far usually to uh, get a lot of savings. 27, so one more should do it. All right, that's plenty. All right, and now we'll go over to uh, Fine Art America to uh, put this up for sale.
Okay, so here we are in my uh, gallery. Um, to upload, I've gone to, uh, let's see, I've gone to my profile and I've clicked on images. Um, sometimes you might have your, if you use Fine Art America, you might start out in galleries. But to upload, you got to go to images, click upload image, and we'll select our file. I believe I had that on the desktop. Here it is, hunting dog. And we upload it. All right, once it's finished uploading, it'll display right here, and we got to give the artwork a title. And I have already saved some stuff to my uh, notepad. So I'm just going to copy this. And then go back here and just paste it in. Okay, and for keywords, I have a few of those prepared ahead of time. So the uh, only thing I want to make sure you notice is the first keyword I use is actually a match for the uh, title of the, of the uh, picture. And I also include my first and last name as well as just my last name. Um, it helps if I want to search for myself at some point to maybe find uh, artwork on Fine Art America that I've done. So we'll copy that. And paste that here. And then I also have a description here ready ahead of time. A couple of things I want to point about the point out about it is I describe the picture, and which is of course filled with keywords for Google to kind of pick up on English pointer, um, you know, misty forest, uh, riverbank, uh, things like that. Um, also mention why I made it and how I made it and some of the resources used. These are all good things to have in your description because you want a, a nice lengthy description. Also include my name in the description. Um, something I also like to do is repeat again the title of the image also in the description. Uh, it just helps uh, Google pick up keywords when you know people might be searching for artwork like yours. So I'm just going to copy this. And paste that in here. Um, display options. Uh, you never enable the watermark that drives away sales. Uh, do enable the full resolution preview so people can zoom in on parts of your picture to uh, get a good look at them. Um, this is just a picture of a dog, so it's work safe viewing. Um, I have a selection of sub galleries that I've created, and for this one, I'm just going to put it into uh, domestic animals. Um, I'm going to leave out groups for now, unless there's anything that really jumps out. How about our four legged friends? Uh, that's good enough for now. Um, I don't sell an original because it's uh, digital art. Also, be sure up here. Mine's set to, to default to digital art, but you got to select what are, what category it's going to fall under. Um, I also have some uh, set, some uh, prices already preset, so you can see here uh, the markup that I'm going to get based is based on the size. Um, and we can't go with the largest size though because the image wasn't at least didn't hit this minimum pixel size. Uh, some greeting card prices, throw pillows. Now, I haven't set up the default for the throw pillows yet, so I'll do. I'll just manually enter some numbers. Um, for throw belt, throw pillows, it's suggested you never enter anything other than just four or five dollars. Uh, phone case, in case anybody wants. Five. I've actually sold some phone cases recently, so um, eh, ten dollars I make every time I sell a phone case. Uh, this image licensing, if you think your images, if somebody may be interested in using your images for commercial reasons, it's a good program to check out. Uh, it can get pretty complicated, but uh, if you read all the details about it, and you, this is where you set up the prices for that. And since right now it's 4.30 in the afternoon, I am going to uh, post this to my Facebook wall. Usually I, I do it late. I schedule it to go out later, but we can do it right now. And I'm just going to post it to my fan page, and then I'll post it to my Twitter account. Now I'm the uh, what it what face or what Fine Art America puts in your Facebook feed and Twitter feed is probably not the best, but it's acceptable in many cases. So uh, we'll submit it, and just like that, it's up for sale and ready to go. Now let's say I wanted to uh, I've already put it on my uh, Facebook feed and Twitter feed, and we can check that out real quick. So if I go to um, Uh, the Art of Daniel Eskridge, which is my Facebook fan page. You'll see it's here and already being marketed by, uh, or being marketed there. And I can also go to my Twitter feed. 
and you can see it's appeared there as well. So anybody who follows me on Facebook or Twitter can twi uh, click right through to the link and they'll go right to my page and be able to buy a print. Now a couple other places I might want to be able to market this, you can use these uh, quick media buttons here. I can put it on my Pinterest account and I have a whole bunch of uh, Pinterest boards, so I'll just put it in animals. I'll skip seeing it now. And I can even put it on my Google Plus account. So now I've thoroughly covered social media uh, to market my new picture. So um, I hope that helps everybody out a little bit. Um, as always, uh, all the resources I used will be in the notes for this show. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more or read some of my articles or even check out some of my art, you can find me on my blog at www.introvertartist.com and here I post articles on how to make art, how to sell it online, tools that you can use. Uh, I have links to my gallery as well as a, you can subscribe to my newsletter here and my newsletter is something I send out every Wednesday with news on my latest uh, artworks, articles, videos, promotions, discounts and I even throw in a few a free computer wallpaper every week. So thanks everybody and good night.